The fast of Daniel is the abstinence from all secular information such as media, entertainment, music and literature for 21 days with the aim of achieving something greater, the Holy Spirit. During the fast of Daniel, you will develop an intimate communion with God. But before getting to know what you should do during the fast, you must understand what you should not do. Exclude all unnecessary and superficial activities from your life, the ones that divert your focus from God. Exclude mere entertainment or distractions that add nothing to you. What should you do during the fast of Daniel? Meditate on the Word of God every day. Go to the church as often as you can during these 21 days. Have your personal moments with God at home. Pray, fast, and absorb spiritual content. Visit the UCKG's website. Follow Bishop Macedo's blog. Take part in the Fast of Daniel and observe changes in your actions and reactions. Find the answer you have been looking for for so long. The Fast of Daniel. 21 days to be disconnected from the world and connected to the Spirit of God. Hi everyone, you're joining us in the Fast of Daniel. We are on day four and we are reading here the book of John. Let's read together. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Very well. Uh, first of all, I would like to help you understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit helping us Imagine um, you driving a car without a map, without a GPS, without Google Maps, driving to a place that you've never been, and you just get in your car and you start to drive. And you need to probably open the window and start asking. Now, this would be something that happened hundreds or thousands of years ago when there was no map, when there was no mobile phone, no Google Maps, no applications. But this is not necessary today. Today, nobody in their right mind would travel without searching more about how to get to the destination as quick as possible, as safe as possible, and using the tools available like applications, maps. So intelligently, when you get into your car, you open that application that is for free, and you put there the destination and it will start giving you directions it will assist you along the way, helping you to reach your final destination. That application, uh, the GPS that is guiding you, will speak to you and tell you, turn left and turn right. But the GPS is not responsible to make decisions on our behalf. The GPS is not driving the car. So the GPS is helping us, assisting us, but we need to drive the car. And that helps us understand that um, the Holy Spirit has a role, but we also have a role. He does his part and we still need to do our part. He will not do what we need to do. He's not gonna drive the car. We still need to drive the vehicle and we have the power to obey or to reject what the app, the GPS, is guiding us to do. So, in the same way is our relationship with God. 
God, He accompanies us on this journey, in this world, and He wants to live inside of us through the Holy Spirit and then uh, helping us navigate our life through uh, important decisions, setbacks, uh, future plans, moments of discouragement. He wants to help us and assist us, comfort us, direct us when it's related to your love life, your, your career, your finances, all with the purpose that we can reach our final destination, which is to achieve success in all areas of our life. Only a fool would reject this gift, this blessing inside of us. So we don't need to do everything alone. We can count on God's expertise, advice. Now, as we were reading here earlier on, let me bring you back there. It says, He will teach you all things. What does that mean? I would like to explore with you uh, the relationship between teacher and student. I believe all of us have been in the position of student. You went to school, you were learning about a specific subject, maths, biology, science, you name it. And the function of the teacher was to, to, to teach you everything about the subject to transfer to you their knowledge and help you in preparation so that at the end of the year, you could go to your exams and you could do well and succeed and pass with flying colors and make progress there at school and later on in your career. And that's the only function of the teacher. And obviously, uh, Good teachers are known by having a very high rate of students that, that pass. Um, so the, the teacher's interest is for the students to do well. That's why they, they spend a lot of time with the students, even after school. Um, they are available. You can text them. You can call them. They will clarify your, their, your doubts. And... Uh, the student's position, uh, the student needs to be present in the classes. Uh, for the student to pass, they must understand that nothing happens automatic. Just like the baptism with the Holy Spirit doesn't happen automatic. So what does the student needs to do? If they want to have a, a successful year and they want to pass and do well with their exams, they need to be present not just physically, they need, they need to be mentally present in the classroom, paying attention, don't get distracted with, your, with other classmates. And they have to bring their homework home and open the books and study, and maybe there will be times that they need to skip social gatherings, they need to skip the things they like and entertainment in order for them to do well, study the subject, perhaps go to the library, do some research online, ask questions in the classroom that sometimes may even seem to be annoying for the rest of the class because they want to go home, but they lift up their hand, they ask the teacher again to explain, to make sure that they get the information right so that with this information, they can confidently go to the exams, and not only to the exams, after the exams, they will be able to confidently go and practice their profession. Good students, they don't waste time at school. Good students, they are focused. They have a laser sharp focus, and they have a goal in life. The bad students, they just hope for the best, and they wish they are lucky. Uh, they don't put all their energy, all their strength in their studies. 
they are divided. They go to school, but whilst they go to school, in their mind, they have many other plans going on, and they want to juggle two things at the same time. Academically, they want to be successful, but at the same time, they have so many other uh, hobbies to attend to, so many other appointments to attend to, um, and this doesn't work. Anybody that divides their strength will be disappointed. So no need to say that at the end of the year, uh, when this person will sit down for the exams, the person will struggle or they will fail or they will not pass. And they have to repeat the entire year. And what a shame when they have to come back and do the entire year and because they, they have to go through the same books, all the knowledge, all the information, but because they didn't practice <laughs> and because they didn't pay attention, so they have to go through that all over again. And there's no shortcut. And we could say that, that the baptism with the Holy Spirit requires as well the same focus as a good student. So... Meditate about it and think about it during the 21 days. If you position yourself as a good student, for you to know everything about the Holy Spirit, for you to immerse yourself in the Holy Spirit, the topic of the Holy Spirit, the scriptures, um, the meetings in the church, asking questions when things are not clear before or after the meeting, and scan the QR code, get in touch with us, um, become, you know, totally obsessed with the Holy Spirit, which is a good obsession, not a bad obsession, so that you will not um, waste time, extend time. The Bible says um, after the water baptism, soon after the water baptism, the people in the Bible, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Soon. It's not a long process. Maybe it's a long process because you have been divided in your strength, you have been dividing your energy. On one hand, you want the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, you have many other things to attend to. So you're not putting all your strength in that. You're not uh, focused. Um, you don't, you, you're not applying yourself. You're, you are not putting all your energy there. There are moments when you're not willing to sacrifice and prioritize the Holy Spirit. All of that, will make the difference in order for you to achieve your final destination, which is to receive the greatest blessing that the Lord Jesus promised, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, so practice this and just rewind your mind back to school when you were a student and you know exactly what you need to do. Even if you have not read the whole Bible from cover to cover, that's not a problem. But as long as you obey and practice, so that's the moment when you pass your exam, if we may say so, okay? And that's when uh, the reward will be the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life, okay? I hope that helped. And we're going to be back again tomorrow with our fast of Daniel. Daniel, you can join us again. And don't forget, this weekend, um, we're going to take extra time to seek the Spirit of God together with the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. We have that here, and you are our guest. It's called the Lord's Supper of the Servants, together with the Sunday, come to me. All right? Come to me. Jesus said, come to me. And he will give you everything that you need physically, spiritually, emotionally. But we need to come to him. Okay? That's the requirement. If you have any questions, you can scan the QR codes. May all of you have a wonderful day. God bless you abundantly.